Hi everyone, welcome back to Lola's Frugal Life Podcast. Today I wanted to talk about some tips for reducing financial stress this holiday season. So before I get into the tips, I just want to kind of put a reminder out there that the holidays can be the most wonderful time of the year, but they can also be one of the most stressful times of the year if we're not careful. And it's really important to just remind ourselves that we do not need to spend a lot of money during the holidays to be able to enjoy the season. Often some of the most enjoyable parts are those things that don't cost any money or cost very little money, like sitting and watching a movie and drinking hot chocolate, or just spending time relaxing or going around the neighborhood and looking at decorations. There's there's so many little things that we can do, um, baking cookies, Um, making special holiday meals or having a special holiday drink or buying a bottle of sparkling cider or whatever. Like there's so many little things that can be really enjoyable during the holidays that have nothing to do with spending a lot of money. So I think we really need to remind ourselves of that first and try and take advantage of those things and only spend the money on the things that we really want to spend the money on and that we can actually really afford to spend the money on and not put ourselves in a position where we're trying to spend money that we don't have to enjoy the holidays and then wind up being stressed out afterwards because we are now behind financially and trying to catch back up. So from there, let's talk about some tips to reduce some of that stress that can be caused during the holidays. So the first um, tip is pretty obvious, but of course it's to have a budget. It can be so easy to overspend during the holidays if you don't have a budget. If you just go out and you're just buying this for this person and buying this for that person and picking up this decoration and grabbing this really pretty expensive wrapping paper and just kind of purchasing things on a whim as you see them, most likely you're gonna wind up spending a lot more than you expect. So having a budget is just so important if you are, um, you know, if you want to make sure that you don't spend over a certain amount of money during the holidays and you want to make sure that you control the spending that you're doing. And the more detailed that budget is, the less likely you're going to end up stressed out about the purchases that you're making. Because when you make a purchase and you know that you had that amount set aside for that purchase that you're making, It feels so much better than when you're just making a purchase and you have no idea if you can afford it or not. So there's a lot of things too that we purchase during the holidays that are not just gifts. Sometimes when we think about creating a budget for the holidays, we think of the people we need to buy for and how much we wanna spend on each person. But there's so many other things that you also spend money on during the holidays that are not gifts. Those might be things like Christmas cards, stamps, gift bags, wrapping paper, gift tags, ingredients for baking and for special meals, special holiday drinks. Um, Maybe you you have to bring like something to a party, Um, any activities you might do that are, you know, maybe you go to see a drive-through holiday lights, you have to pay a fee, or maybe you're donating to a charity for some event you're attending. There's all these other expenses that often come up during the holidays And if you're not accounting for those in your holiday budget and you're just thinking of the gifts that you have to buy, you can end up being in a position where you wind up spending so much more than you were expecting. So it's really important to kind of take account of all of those things up front so that you can determine what you can and can't afford during the holiday season and then that that will help you reduce the amount of stress as those other things are coming up that you didn't consider. Like if you don't think about any of those other things that I just mentioned and you just set your budget based on what you need to spend on gifts, every time you purchase one of those extra items, you're going to be thinking, oh no, I didn't think about purchasing um, these gift bags and I just spent $25 on these or, oh, I wasn't thinking that I was going to have to bring this... um, Uh, I don't know, charcuterie board, (laughs) whatever, um, to this party. And that just cost me um, an extra $20. And then all these other little things, as they're adding up, it could wind up being a significant amount of money. So by having a budget, you can see upfront what you can afford to spend and what you can't. 
And it also allows you to make decisions on what you want to spend money on. If you do want to be able to have that money to attend those seasonal events or to bring a platter to someone's party, then you might have to go back and look at your budget that you determined for purchasing gifts and say, okay, well, maybe if I cut back each person's um, gift spending budget by $5, then that'll give me the money to have set aside for these other things that I want us to spend money on. So it just kind of gives you that look up front so that you're not stuck at the end of the holidays with this um, excess of spending that you didn't want to have and then you're trying to catch up after that. So having a budget, just like in general in our finances, having a budget for the holidays is super important to reduce stress because most of the stress from the holidays often comes from that spending of money and being unsure if we can afford what we're spending on. So then of course, I think obviously the next step, the next tip rather, is once you have the budget, sticking to the budget. Especially during the holidays, well, it's always important to stick to your budget, but in the holidays, you really have to be even more diligent about sticking to your budget because it's so easy to spend a little extra here and a little extra there, um, and it can add up very quickly, especially if you have quite a few individuals on your shopping list. It can be really tempting to wanna spend a little bit more or buy something extra to go along with a gift, and if you're not sure that you have some extra funds to be able to pull from, it's not gonna be worth that in the long run. It might feel good in the moment to spend that extra money on someone that's important to you, but if you realize in the end that you spent more than you really had available, um, you spent more than you could afford, it's not gonna be worth it. It's just gonna make you feel bad and have to struggle to make up that money. And the person, I'm sure they'll appreciate it, but they would have also appreciated it if you didn't spend the money too. So if you are confident that you have extra money to pull from and you wanna get something extra, of course, that is your choice to do that and that's great. But you just wanna be sure that you definitely do have that money available and not to just get caught up in the moment and maybe wanna go a little bit further than you really know you should. Another tip to avoid um, or to reduce stress, financial stress during the holidays, is to consider shopping online to avoid impulse purchases. So this can be, um, I mean, this is obviously individualized. Everyone has different triggers that cause them to um, make impulse purchases. But I find that when I'm in a store, it's much easier to grab something that I didn't intend to pick up um, than if I'm shopping online. Often, if I'm shopping online, I'm usually have um, usually going to one specific store, um, you know, like one website. I'm looking for a specific item. I generally purchase that item and then check out, and I'm done. Um, so to me, it's easier to avoid impulse purchases that of things you might see while you're standing online or when you walk into the store, they might have a big display of something on sale and then you end up picking up things that you really didn't plan to spend money on. So if that's an area that you struggle um, with making impulse purchases during the holidays, maybe consider making the majority of your holiday purchase online. And another benefit to shopping online is that you can easily um, do comparison shopping without having to go store to store. So that can help you save money also. And a lot of times you can find coupon codes and other things like that um, that can help reduce the cost of whatever it is you're purchasing. So that might be something that can help you stick within your budget because you can look at the prices and decide what purchase you can make that fits within your budget rather than being on the spot in the store and trying to make a decision. Um, it might give you a little bit more flexibility to kind of shop around and get something for a person that is within the amount that you intended to spend. My next tip is to track your spending. If you are not tracking your holiday purchases against your budget, it's pretty unlikely that you're gonna be able to stick to your budget. It's gonna make it really difficult. For example, I went shopping with my daughters yesterday. Um, yeah, yesterday was Black Friday. We went out shopping. 
Um, we don't really go out to get like Black Friday deals. We just, it's just a thing that we do. We go out, we get breakfast, and then we just go to the local stores. We'll go to like Target and Kohl's and Michael's and all of those kind of stores. So we made purchases in Michael's, in Kohl's, in Target, um, in TJ Maxx, and I think that might be, oh, in Bath and Body Works. But when I came home, I immediately sat down at my computer with the receipts in hand, with the bags in my living room, and I still had a hard time remembering the things that we purchased. We didn't go crazy. Like my, my daughter got some cute holiday socks. We got Christmas pajamas for one of my dogs, only for one of my dogs because the other one will not wear pajamas. Um, we got some candles that were on sale at Bath and Body Works. Um, I forget, we got, it, it, we didn't, it wasn't excessive shopping, um, but we purchased a, a decent amount of things. Some of them were gifts for other people. Some of them, like I said, was like holiday socks or the dog pajamas, or I got like um, a decorative fall item at Michael's that was like 90% off, that was super cute, whatever. We got a variety of different things. But just even sitting down immediately, as soon as we got home with that receipt in hand and with the items in there, I had to get up so many times and go look through the bags and look at the receipt and try and figure out what items were because it's really hard to remember like what when you're doing a lot of shopping, especially when you're going out shopping for multiple people, it's hard to remember exactly what you purchased when you get home, even when you just get home. So it's so important to track your expenses for the purchases that you're making as soon as you possibly can because it's so easy to forget. And when you go out shopping, it's also a good idea to bring your most recently updated holiday budget with you that shows what you've already purchased because it can also be easy to purchase something for someone because you forgot that you already got them a gift, especially if you're the type of person like me who shops during the year I am constantly looking for things that might be a good gift for someone at any time I'm out shopping, just because I like to get Christmas shopping done early as early as possible, but also because it's not always easy to find gifts for certain people, so sometimes if I find something that would be great for a person, I'll get it ahead of time, even if it's like many months in advance, but because of that, it can be easy to forget. So by having a budget with you that's already updated and shows what you already purchased, you can review it and make sure you're only shopping for people that you actually still need a gift for. Because it stinks when you come home and think, oh, this is so great, I bought this gift for this person, and then you go and put it with your other gifts and you remember, oh, I, that's right, I already got them something. So just a reminder, track your spending as soon as you possibly can. If you go out shopping in person, Record it as soon as you get home, and if you purchase something online, then go ahead and record it as soon as you make the purchase. It just makes it so much easier, and it reduces that stress of seeing all these charges come through your bank account, and you can't remember what you bought at TJ Maxx and what you bought at Kohl's or whatever, wherever you were shopping at. So that is a big, big tip. Um, that can make a really big difference in, in knowing what you spent money on and knowing how you're tracking against your budget. And then another tip is really to just remember that the, the value that you get a gift for someone has no direct relationship to how much you care about someone. It can be hard to hold back on the amount we spend on certain individuals. We might feel like we really wanna get them this really great gift and you know maybe we wanna feel like we, we spent like you know, so much money on them or, you know, we really want to show them like how much we care and we want to get them this really amazing gift. And, but, you know, if it's something that you want to do and you can afford it, then that's great. But it's never worth putting yourself into a stressful financial situation to purchase a gift for someone that you really cannot afford. Um, the value, like I said, the value of that gift, it's not it's not a direct relationship to how much you care about that person. It's not like the person gets a really expensive gift so now they know you really care about them so much. You know, it's difficult because you wanna make them feel special and you wanna show that you really care, but we just really need to remind ourselves that that value of the gift 
is not a tie into that relationship and how much we care. And it can get especially difficult when you see other people giving really expensive gifts um, because you want your gift to be like as good or better than those other gifts. And it's just difficult. We, we just have to remember that, you know, the, the, the purpose of a gift is to show that we care about someone and that we appreciate them, but it's not about showing how much money you can spend on them. And this gets really difficult with kids too, like with little kids, not even necessarily your own children, but if you're buying for like nieces and nephews and you have like some relatives that go all out and spend a fortune on the gifts and then you give them this like other little gift and you might feel like, oh wow, like that they're thinking, oh wow, look at so-and-so got me this amazing gift. Look how great this is. And then you give them like a little coloring book or something. And I'm not saying that that's bad at all. Um, I'm just saying like, whatever the value is of the gift is much less than what someone else might have given to the child. They might be looking at, wow, look what this person gave me. And it can make you want to go out and spend more to show that child, well, yeah, but I'm going to give you this too. In the long run, those kids are not going to remember that, Um, especially when kids get so many gifts as it is. Like within 15 minutes, they don't even remember who gave them what. But in the moment, it could make you feel like, oh, I want to spend more money on this child because I want them to see how much I care about them. But just try and remind yourself that, one, we don't want to compare the gifts that we're giving to someone to what someone else gave because then we're really just comparing like how much money we can spend to impress someone. So we don't want to get involved in that. And we really have to remember that nobody remembers like the value of, I mean, most people don't remember. Some people might, but the majority of people are not going to sit there and think about how much you spent on the gift for them. They're just going to remember that you gave them a gift. And if you care about them, you're going to be showing them in other ways. So it's not so important to spend so much on gifts. And I'm speaking from experience because I have had to pull back my Christmas budget over the years because I was always the one that wanted to spend more on my nieces and nephews and more on my my in-laws and my mom and my dad and my sister. And I always wanted to get them these great gifts and spend more and, and like see them open these gifts and love how much they you know, they they loved these gifts that they got. And, you know, my budget was getting enormous. And I was like, I cannot afford to spend this much money, especially as my family grew and grew. I was like, I cannot afford to spend this much money on Christmas. And yes, I love giving these people these great gifts, but I can also give them really nice gifts and it's not going to impact our relationship. So just really try and remember that and don't put yourself in a struggling financial situation and even if you're not struggling it just don't don't put yourself in a situation where you're spending a lot more money than you really want to because even if you can actually afford it if it's not the way that you you want to spend your money it's still going to be stressful to be spending money in a way that is not how you what what you would want to intend to do with your money and then my last tip is just for planning for next year, create your 2023 holiday budget now. If you feel like you could have been better prepared than you were this year, then you have an opportunity right now to create your budget for next year. This is the best time to do it because right now it's fresh in your mind what things you didn't think of, what caused you to go over budget, Did you have other people that you needed to purchase for that you didn't consider? Did you have events that you wanted to go to that you didn't think of? You know, by doing your budget right now, not only can you make sure that you capture all of those things that you forgot, you can make adjustments now to make sure you are covering all the things that you want to be able to spend money on and make sure that it's within your total dollar amount that you have available for the holidays. And you can also start saving up. You'll have a full year to start saving up money for that holiday budget rather than realizing when it's too late that you don't have enough to cover it and really trying to struggle to figure out how to do the best you can with what you have. So that is it for today's episode. I really hope this was helpful helpful to you in some way. Don't forget, we do have a Facebook group over at um, Lola's Frugal Life. If you just search for Lola's Frugal Life private listener group, you can join that group. It's at facebook.com slash groups slash Lola's Frugal Life. I would really love to have you over there. Um, We're a small group, so there's not that much talking going on right now because we only have a handful of people 
um, that are active, but I would really love to grow the group. I love talking to you guys. Um, so if you're interested, come join us over there. Um, again, that's the Facebook group at Lola's Frugal Life. Um, it's it's facebook.com slash group slash Lola's Frugal Life. And then also, um, just another reminder, if you wouldn't mind leaving me a rating or review on iTunes or um, on Apple Podcasts, rather, um, or whatever um, platform you listen, that would really, really be appreciated. I am really trying to grow this podcast. It is very difficult, and those ratings and reviews really do help. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, I would really appreciate it. And then also, if you love this podcast, please share it with a friend. That helps grow the podcast as well. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. I will see her next week. So thank you for checking in for this podcast episode. And don't forget, you can always email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at lolasfrugallife. And you can find a blog post for most of my episodes and definitely all of my meal plan episodes at lolasfrugallife.com. You can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash lolasfrugallife. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I could see your listening. Also, if you can please take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, those ratings and reviews are what help the show come up better in search results so that other people can find this podcast, so that will really help me in growing my audience. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have an awesome day.